What's up, y'all? This video is about how to put a winch on the new Outlander, um, either the 500 or the 750. Um, the 2023 is a newer. This is a XMR 700. Um, I don't really recommend this particular winch. It's really bulky and hard to mount. And also, I have already having issues with it, and it's getting warrantied. Um, I'll make an update how my second winch is, but this one's already dorking up. You'll see it at the end of the video. Uh, but I think this process might be helpful if you're trying to install a winch on one of these machines. I just recommend going with the traditional style ATV winch, not this giant blocky worn one. If I was going to do it again, I would probably get the Harbor Freight Badlands 3500. All right, guys, I got my worn Axion 3500 winch here. This is the winch that has the built-in contactor here. So you actually just have two big poles that go all the way to your battery. And the solenoid or the relay or the contactor is right inside the winch. So it does make the winch really big, but this thing feels very heavy duty and sturdy. It's like 19 pounds without the cable on it or anything else. I got a really good deal on this winch because I ordered just the winch and I ordered the wiring kit separately. So there's the wiring kit and the very premium switch. Um, that has a little LED and everything. I ordered that for 60 bucks. Ordered the winch for like 150, I think. Uh, so instead of paying 700, I paid about 200. And then I'm adding my own Amsteel Blue 316 winch line. I used to use the cheap stuff, but um, it's not as strong. So if you run the Amsteel Blue 316 is strong enough for a 3,500 pound winch. But if you're going to run the cheap stuff, you really got to run quarter inch, or you're going to be breaking it all the time. And this lets a lot more fit on an ATV size spool. So. I went back with the premium stuff, and it does, by the way, it does last a little longer, better abrasion resistance. I just installed the winch line on there, and you can see how I did it there. Um, if you're looking for an explanation for how I do these, I have another video I posted a long time ago. I actually used that video to do this winch. That's why I'm sitting here in the office, um, because this is the right way to do it, and it's a little tricky, and I took the time to figure it out one time, made a video, and I always watch the video to remind myself. So check out this video. It's Synthetic Winch Line Installation Tips Canon XMR. I will put that link in the description. All right, so no surprise here. This is not a direct fit by any means. The winch hits this bracket really bad before it can get down to the bolt holes. It also hits these bolts right here, which um, are what hold this front plastic on. Uh, so it's not gonna be a direct fit. Um, this winch is a lot bigger than most ATV winches. I went with it because it's got a very good mechanism for the free spool and I frequently have free spool issues. So to make this work, I'm gonna have to put some longer bolts in these four locations and some nice big spacers to get the winch up off the bumper a little bit to get enough clearance. So there's plenty of clearance up and behind the winch, so that's not an issue. Look around, I actually had the perfect spacers in stock. So these spacers are gonna go in between the winch and the bumper in all four spots and I got some longer bolts I had laying around too. So let me try to get those installed under there and see how that positions the winch. Um, these are nice fat thick wall spacers so it should be plenty strong enough and uh, I'll let you know how it looks after I get it on there. Right, so the major hardware part of the installation is done. You can see the four posts. The winch is sitting up off the bracket. Um, is that ideal? No, not really. You'd want it flat on there for maximum strength. But for a 3500 pound winch I think it's fine. You can see that I've got enough clearance by the control arms, and if you look back here, I'm also not touching the diff. So um, I had to have just the right amount of spacer to get it up off the frame, but not push it into the diff. So I had the perfect spacers in stock. Um, I showed you those earlier. About a one inch spacer uh, did the trick. Maybe a seven eighths would have been better, or a three quarter, but I'd say you want between three quarter and one inch to make this winch fit on there by spacing it up off the frame, or the bumper bracket. Pretty sweet. And then those four bolts again are just right here. Very easy. Um, if you buy this winch, it doesn't fit. Just make a trip down to Ace Hardware and uh, you'll figure out what you need. The wiring is very easy and straightforward because there's no contactor. So you just hook up your wires like so. Um, negative on the top, positive on the bottom, right there. And then you run the wires across behind the winch. You can see them up here zip tied into the frame there. It came under the control arm here. And then I go up over the control arm to the frame here. They run pretty much straight through by the snorkel. I'm gonna add a couple more zip ties in this area. Um, come straight up through here, over this little plastic shroud, down through here, and then hook up to the hot side of your relay for the starter and the common ground point. These wires um, did not come with my winch because again, I ordered just the winch, but I had them laying around from some other winches. Any battery type cable will do. And because the battery's here, 
but Can-Am runs all the power to this. You don't have to run all the way to the battery. You can go to right here. Um, you just pop up this little cover like that and boom, there's all your stuff. So that's pretty easy. Now I've got to finish wiring the uh, controller harness, which is this guy, and uh, mount it on the handlebars. And I'll show you once I get that done. Um, but first I'm gonna put a few more zip ties down here to organize uh, these two wires and keep them out of the mess of other wires in here because your starter's right there. Alrighty, so it's all wired up and working. I'm gonna show you how I did it. So um, we already showed you the battery wires, the main wires, that's pretty easy. Now we gotta show you the switch harness wiring. That was a little trickier. So uh, I made the connection right here, nice waterproof worn connector. Um, this is from the harness kit I ordered, part number and link in the description. Um, and I ran it up to here, ran it across to that side because this cable was really long so I didn't want to um, have a bunch of it coiled up so I kind of ran it the cleanest, longest way I could. So comes up here, runs all the way across to that side. And then over here is where it gets tricky because you need to get it up into this area and there's already a ton of wires in here. Um, so what I found was easiest was to run it over to here, run it back here. You can see it right there behind the shock. I'm gonna put a zip tie to the frame right there to keep it away from the shock. Then it comes up here, points up, and it comes through this big, there's a big rubber uh, filler plug right here. I just kind of pulled it up and I ran the hose, or excuse me, the harness behind there. Um, it was too much work to get it to come through here and it could have got pinched, too many pinch points. Um, and then it comes up next to the handlebars like all the other brake lines and um, all the other wires you see here for the flyby wire and so on. And now it's up to here and it's gonna get mounted right there. Um, that's all there is to it really. Um, you have to tap in to battery power for the switch to work, right? To it can give a signal to the contactor. So I used a wire tap right there and went on to my cigarette lighter. That's on this piece right here. Um, cigarette lighter, the red one's positive, obviously. And now this hook's on there. If I wanna remove this cowl, I just unplug the cigarette lighter like I usually would and that'll come with it. And it's got a little fuse in there. But it works nice. I just need to get the handlebar thing mounted um, and then wind up all the rope. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll show you the final product. Um, but the trickiest part of this install so far was definitely figuring out where to bring up this harness because there's a lot going on in this area, right? You have all your vent lines right here. You have all your wiring right here, your fuse box. So um, you're gonna route the wires in such a way where they're not gonna get pinched. These plastics have a lot of sharp edges on them. My hands hurt from working on it. That's a common complaint I have with Can-Ams. Um, and in order to not have it cut your harnesses, like my 2016, you gotta mount things properly. Also, this is just flopping around in here. I need to add um, another plastic rivet, or maybe just a zip tie here, because the OEM plastic rivet already flew out. So that's, that's kind of janky. Um, I mounted the thumb controller up here. That's out and that's in. This is a smart switch. It's got a little LED to give you a red light if there's issues you encounter, etc. The wire from that zip ties to the brake line and then goes down there next to the brake line. And it goes straight down. Um, Oh, also a lot of people commented this, you can turn the headlights off. You have to hold the headlight switch down for like five seconds. Boom, now they're off. So that was helpful. Thanks for commenting that guys. And people also pointed out that this little notch on the frame down here is for the plow. Uh, so again, thanks for helping me out, figuring that stuff out. And uh, hope you guys find this video helpful. All right, so update on this worn, supposedly badass Axion winch it does not go in anymore. So I use it on one ride, turns green, but nothing happens. If you hold it down, it'll turn red and throw an error code. So it looks like this smart winch is too smart for its own good. It still goes out. So what I did was I, uh, I wound it backwards so I can use it this weekend, um, which is not ideal, right? So I have to use the free spool to pull it out and then I can press in so I wound it up the opposite way, it actually pulled the bike out. Uh, but that's pretty pathetic. So I got my new fair lead today so I can stop cutting my winch rope on the sharp edges of the front bumper. Um, the first one I ordered was actually not the right size between the bolt holes, so make sure you get the right one. There are a couple different variations within about an inch of these ATV size fair leads. This is really nice, it's on Amazon for 10 bucks. However, before I could install it, I went to go check my winch and it would come out but it wouldn't go in and I could hear the contactor in here clicking. 
So I know the signal is getting from the switch to the relay. So not full of water. This gasket looks pretty good. Everything in here is dry. So I'm not really sure why I'm already having issues with it.